Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on the like, subscribe, and drop us a comment. If you're returning, welcome back. This video is on a end table. You'll notice I've already got this online in a longer, more detailed version. This version is more for if you already kind of know what you're doing, uh, but you need to know just quick, easy tips on how to put it together uh, versus the other one that's more long and drawn out and detailed on how to actually cut and uh, get the angles and stuff you need to build with. Now on my top pieces they're 15 inches long. I've actually got this marked at 15 and 8 inch. What this will do when I glue these together, if I get off a hair on either end, which again I'm not a carpenter so I get off every now and then, I leave it a little bit long so I can go back and just nip the edge off of it and make them nice and smooth at the end. If you're good at what you're doing, you might not have to do that. If you're worse than me, you might have to do this five and a quarter inches. So it's easier to nip off a little bit than to try to add. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and process my uh, two by fours. I'm not going to do the top or the bottom yet. We'll do that separately. I'm going to do these first. I'm going to rip these edges off first. Then I'm going to cut them down to three inches. I'm going to rip the edge off of one of these and then cut it down an inch and a half. And same with the crosses. I'm going to rip the edge off. Cut into two one and a half inch sections. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do with this board is I basically just want to take this rounded over edge on it. So I'm going to take it and I'll open my fence. I'm going to push my fence to where I just touched the blade, slide my board out, and I'm going to tap it in a little bit further. You don't want to go too far because you want it three inches out of this board. It's three and a half inches wide now. Your blade's going to take about a quarter inch out plus your round over. So if you do this on one side, it should leave you enough off the other side to get you a three inch board. All right, so with Ears on, eyes on, we're going to go ahead and cut the board. a nice crisp edge over here and I've got more than enough room to get my three inches out of that. I'm not going to cut my three inches yet because I want to cut them all at the same time so I know they're all exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and rip down the rest of them. I'm going to take it, slide the ruler, or the ruler, the tape measure to the fence. As you can see, I'm right to three inches on the outside edge of the uh, tooth there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bump this into an inch and a half. I'm going to double check the top of my board. Some of these are sometimes off a little bit. This one's right at an inch and a half. I'm going to go ahead and set my blade to inch and a half. Same way, outside edge of the tooth. One and a half. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Make it as perfect as you want, but that's pretty close to me. This is my front and back at the bottom, and these are my crosses. Alright, so the next step is to prep my top. Uh, I'm going to do it the same way I did all the legs and stuff. I'm basically going to rip the uh, fine edge off of here. I'm going to cut these top two bigger pieces. My 2x6 is down to 4.5 inches. And then I'm going to cut my 2x4s down to 3 inches. Alright, so if I did my math correctly, my 2x6s are 24 inches long. I'm going to cut them down to 4.5, so that gives me 9 inches. 24 minus 9 is 15. So I cut my 2x4s to 15 inches. Now since I'm jointing these tabletops, instead of putting this on my joiner, I'm going to put my uh, my uh, level up here. Again, this is an I-beam, metal I-beam, nice and flat. Now I'm going to run this through with this on here. I'm going to push the level through at the same time I'm pushing the board through. All right, so now that everything is cut except for the bottom shelf, what you need to do is decide your finish, whether you're going to paint this, do you want a smooth finish, do you want to antique it, do you want to stain it. Um, we're still going to draw pocket holes in the legs and the sides and places like that. So I wouldn't sand it quite yet. When we get the pocket holes done, then sand everything. Then if you're going to paint it, you want a nice finished paint, um, I would go ahead and paint it before you assemble it also. 
Again, this is up to you. You can do it whatever order you want. It's just easier to sand than paint while it's all in pieces like this than once you get it all together. All right, I've mocked my two sides up here. So this is the side top. I've got this board laying flat so it'll face outward. This board's turned up on the side, so that makes the bottom support for the bottom of the table. I've done that with both of the sides. And again, this is one of those situations where your side and your leg are almost the same length, so make sure you don't get them mixed up. So what I want to do is I want to measure up about two inches on the inside here. So I'm going to do two inches here, two inches there, and I'm going to go ahead and mark the front two because we've also got the front boards that are going to attach to here. Now you can make this two inches, you can make it four inches, you can make it one inch, you can flatten it to the floor. This is all your preference, uh, whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to give it two inches off the floor. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my board. And do I want this exposed? Do I don't want this exposed. Now if you're going to paint it, it probably doesn't matter unless you've got a bunch of dents or dimples in there. In my case, I'm painting. I'm going to take my smoother side. I'm going to turn it the way I want it. And I'm going to check all my boards the same way. Anything that's going to be exposed, like this is going to be my face, check it. This is my leg facing outward. I've got like a crack there. So I'm going to turn it this way so you can't see the crack. So I'm examining all the boards, doing the same thing for it. Best sides go out. It's me. Probably every single board I had was turned the wrong way. That one that way. That one. So all my good sides are out. So what I do now is take my pencil and I'm just mark on here where my pocket holes go. That way I know which side the boards are. I'm trying to hold the camera and pencil at the same time. Which side of the board my pockets go on. Alright, so my pocket holes are drilled. I've marked two inches up on the side, two inches up on the inside. I've got my 90 here. I'm going to use it to straighten up my edge up here. I'll pull these out. I'm going to glue both ends, drop them in, clamp them. Once I get them clamped, I'm going to stand it up, take a look at it, make sure everything's flush, tighten the clamps up, and then we'll put the screws in. The boards twisted or turned, you can actually be square on the bottom and not on the top. And vice versa. Now, again, you can make this as perfect or as unperfect as you want. That's pretty darn close. I think I got a little warp on my board, so I'm not quite perfect here. But what I'll probably do is I'm going to clamp it, put this screw in up here, and then I'll push up a little bit here and tighten the bottom screw down. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten my clamps up. Don't want anything to move. I'm going to use two and a half inch pocket screws in this. All right, so I went ahead and hit this with a 120 just to smooth down some of the uh, swirls from the saw. A couple little blemishes here and there that I didn't really like. I'm going to go ahead and distress this anyhow, so I'm not too worried about the perfect finish. But for me personally, I just wanted to smooth it out a little bit. Again, finish this however you want. You don't even have to do what I'm doing here. Again, this could just be a rough 2 by 4 You could already have it painted and done by now. I'm just going through a few extra steps um, for the finish that I'm going for. The next thing I want to do is I want to take my fronts, put them in here. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the sides. I'm going to clamp them, straighten them out, glue them in place and then screw them down. So I've got my tops glued in, my fronts, my bottom. Now this is the inch and a half thick beam here. Because in the bottom, as you can see, I've lined them up perfectly here. If you stand this upright, it's easier to do than me leaning over the edge. But I took my square and I laid it across my edge just to make sure I was nice and square across the edges. Squared up my corners. That's right, screwed them down. So my corners are nice and square. Nice and tight, should be good. 
So I'm going to clamp this, screw this piece in, do the same on the bottom. We'll go to the next step. So I'm on the side of my unit. I want to do my crosses next. Take this corner and clamp it so that corner is just overlapping that almost a perfect angle. Then I'm going to take this bottom half and I'm going to clamp it so this corner is touching that corner at almost a perfect angle. Once I get that done, I'm going to take a pencil marker from the inside and then I'll have my angle to cut. So I've got this one so it's right on the corner and I've got this one so it's right on the corner. Now from the inside with those clamped into place, what I want to do is I want to take my pencil and mark that angle. It's a little easier to do if you don't have a camera in your hand. Sorry, I got the camera all off of whack, but basically I marked that angle also. I don't want to do my other side yet. Basically, I want to do this first, take it off. Or you can take this little Craig tool I got here, this little uh, corner measure. I'm going to cross it inside. I'm going to lay the flat edge on this. I'm going to slide it down to where my line is. All I have to do is take this until I find the perfect line. Once I get the line, which is there, tighten my little thumb screw down and on the wheel here. It shows my inside and outside. So it's 140 and 38. So 38 degrees. So I'm going to cut. So I'm going to set my saw to 38 degrees. Chop this, chop that. It should fit perfectly in place. So once I got my 38 degree angle in here, I realized when I put it over here, there's nothing to hold this to. When I go to chop it, it's just going to move in my hand. It's going to make a mess, break something. Something's going to fly out at me. So I put my adapters on here. So basically when I put this in here, I can lock it in this way, and instead of starting at a 90 degree angle, I start at 45. Since my angle is 38 degrees, I take 48 minus, or 45 minus 38, end up with 7 degrees. Set my blade to 7 degrees. All right, so after snipping it up a few times, I've got my fit that I want. I'm going to take this one back out. I'm going to lay it on top of my other one. Make sure it's straight, pencil mark my lines, take them over, cut them, bring them back over. So I think I got that where I wanted that. Basically, I'd rather make more trips back and forth to the saw to get a nice good fit than to make less trips back and forth to the saw and have a sloppy fit. So now you can do two things here. You can either lap this, which means you can cut half of this board out, half of this board out, stick them together, or you can just cut it and put it in place. Similar technique to marking this either way. I'm going to pull this so it's halfway past this, halfway past the bottom, give or take a little bit. I'm going to put this one on the inside, same thing, halfway and halfway. And again, if you did that right, it should be a snug fit, if not a perfect fit. So I'm going to bump those together. I want to bump these together if I don't bump it out. That gives me my crossing point. So what I want to do is mark these. Because I'm going to cut this and I'm going to attach it to this. I'm going to cut this one and attach it to this. I'm not going to lap mine. I'm going to mark it on both sides. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to make this upper right, lower left. When I cut this, if this angle changes any at all, or if this angle's off just a hair down here, it could affect where my marking is. So I'm going to make sure I keep this in the same position it's in right now. So I'm going to go cut this. Again, I'm going to cut it longer than it needs to be, and then just snake this up to where it needs to be. So I'm putting my marker on there, lining my line up, tighten it down. That shows me I've got like a 78-degree angle. Now back over to my saw, this time I've taken off my 45 degree jig, I'm back to a 90 degree, so I've got 78 degrees on my angle, I'm starting with a 90, so 90 minus 78 is 12, so I've got my saw set to 12 degrees. So 
So I'll turn around and repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so there's several ways of attaching this. It's just for decoration, so the glue will hold it in place uh, once the glue sets. So you don't really need a lot of pressure to hold it in place. I'm going to take mine, and you can brad nail through here, so you can shoot a brad in here, a brad in here. Uh, the middle one, you can shoot the brad through here to hold this one in place. And the top one, you can put a screw in from the back and hold it in place and glue it. Uh, what I'm going to do with these, on the inside of the top here, I already did this side so you can see what I was doing. I'm going to take a screw. I'm going to pre-drill a hole down at an angle, not a steep angle. Once I start to screw it, then I'm going to take it to the drill, turn it upward, and run it down into this one. Just make sure your screw is not so long that it pops out of the bottom. So make sure you get the right length screw. So that's how I'm going to secure the top. The bottom is deep enough that I'm just going to take the screw, put a pocket hole in there, recess it in there, and shoot it up through the bottom. That will keep that one in place. So I'm going to attach this bar first. Clamp it to where your clamp is not going to be in the way of your screw, but your board doesn't move out of the way. So I'm going to be right on the edge of the board. And I'm just trying to keep the board from pushing forward and backwards when I screw it. Alright, so with that in place, that's our base complete. Now again, finish this as good as you want. You can sand it back down. You can use wood filler, fill out little grooves, cracks, crevices. You can take a hammer, beat the crap out of it, uh, distress the whole bottom of it. Uh, up to you, but that at least gets your foundation done. Alright, time to work on the top. We've got some decisions to make here. First of all, I left these a little bit longer, uh, as you remember at the very beginning. So when I flush this side out, if I've got a crack or a groove over here when I clamp all this together, glue it, pocket screw it, I'm going to take my saw and just run a nice straight edge across there so when I butt this side out, it fits in perfectly. Then you got to decide what kind of finish you're going to do. Are you going to do a distressed finish? Are you going to take hammer, nails, beat the crap out of it, get a nice wood distressed look and stain it? If so, you can probably just clamp together like it is, sand it a little bit, beat the crap out of it, and stain it. Uh, me, I'm going to run mine through a planer, so i got a nice, flat, smooth finish on the top. I'm not going to stress it. I'm just going to stain it. And I'm just going to paint the stress the bottom of when I want to do the paint. Either way, before you do that, make sure you pick your boards. Flip your boards all over. Look at the tops. Look at the bottoms. See which one looks the best. Put your bad side. Whichever way you want, I prefer to put my bad side up, my good side down, just so when I go to screw this together, I'm going to mark my lines across here and I don't want to put the screws on the wrong side of my wood. So if you're ready for that step, again, just mark these, glue all your boards together, clamp it, screw them together, and move on to the next step. Me, i got to go plane some wood. I saw my pocket holes are drilled. Now, if you do like I did and you cut these down three inches, when you do your pocket holes, you may come out the edge of your board. Not, I don't want this to be on the end of my table, so I want to make sure I do the plain board for the end of my table with a nice smooth surface, like so. Same on the other end. That's why I had to do a double pocket. So basically, one will drawn this way, one will drawn this way. Run my screws in and then work my way to the outside edges. Start there and then work your way out. Repeat that down throughout the board. Alright, so after I got everything clamped, I just flipped it over. Alright, so the next step I've got to get me a nice straight edge down this side here. Alright, so I've measured in an inch and a half. This is my shortest board. I've clamped this on this side. It's my square. Make sure it's butted up nice and straight. I'm going to push this to where my guide runs straight across my board. And once I get that there, I'm going to clamp this in on the inside. Like so. 
Double check, triple check. Slide that back. Pop this clamp without moving the board. Clamp it to the inside. So with that side being done, now what we do is spin around to the other side. The other side's not nearly as bad. I still want to All right, so one of our last things to make is our bottom shelf before we... So one of the last things we need to do is cut our bottom shelf in. I waited till the end to make sure if everything, you know, once you start screwing and twisting and turning, sometimes things move a little bit. So I get my final measurements now. So I'm 14 on the money by 17. All right, so with them cut down to five and three quarter inches, that gives me an overall of about 17 and a half. I shaved off just a little bit, but um, so if I end up with that, now I can basically take this. I'm gonna go ahead and joint this together, make sure I'm flush on my end, so I got a nice square on the inside, and then I can rip off to 17 inches exactly. Now, if you're unsure about your cuts, again, it's a whole lot easier to uh, take board off than to add board. So if you're not sure about your 14 width, leave it 14 and a quarter. And just keep running through the table, so I'll take a little piece of Pretty much where I wanted it. Again, it was a little bit over what I needed. I trimmed off the edges. I got 17 by 14, so I right through the hole now. Nice and snug on both sides. So we're going to measure the thickness of this. We're going to put a cleat on here so the shelf sits on top of the cleat. If you want to do pocket screws, you can easily flip this over, put pocket screw holes in here, and just pocket screw it to the frame. I like to sit it on cleats myself. I'm going to take my scrap wood here that I've got left over from the shelves, and I'm going to cut me a couple cleats. So this is the one I cut off the bottom. All right, so with these cut, again, these are just going to fit on the bottom, like so. The shelf will ride on top of it. I'm going to take these now, and I'm going to cut them just a little bit smaller than what I actually need. I don't need them to go from edge to edge. You can do edge to edge from you want, but I'm just going to make it so it's maybe a half inch shorter than what the board actually is. All right, so for my finish, I'm going to use a pre-stain. I'm going to use a early American 230, and I'm going to use a polyurethane for the top of it. All right, so while my stains are drying, I'm going to put my cleats on. Um, you can do this before or after you paint. Uh, we're not painting inside of here anyhow because this is going to get the shelving in it. So what I want to do is I want to pre-drill these. So again, I've cut these a little bit shorter than what I need. That way they fit in the pocket. Make sure you get the correct side. So take the piece of your uh, shelving unit or your shelf. All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach these cleats. Now, if this was inch and a half uh, stock and I didn't cut it down, I would just go ahead and measure up three quarters of an inch, mount it. But just to make sure, it's easier just to take a small piece of your bottom shelf, take a cleat that's already pre-grilled, and lay this on top and get a nice flush edge on it. So I've already done these two over here. So I'm going to put it on there. I'll take my clamp and slide it underneath. Make sure you don't cover your screw hole. And I'm just going to snug this up to where it doesn't move on me. Make sure your piece is down so you can put your shelf on it in the front. So this is not tight, I can still move it up and down if I need to. Take my piece of shelving, slide it in, and just flush it out. Check, double check once you get it where you want it. You have to push it back up, reach underneath there, push your cleat back up. Once you get it there, tighten your clamps up, pull it out, and then screw your, or screw your cleat in. So I'm ready to paint my base and poly my tops. So I'm going to poly the tops first because it takes about two hours between uh, coats on the poly. Once the paint's done, the floor's clean, everything's picked up in here a little bit, I'll come back with my second coat of poly on, and then I'll be probably done for the day until the poly dries, and then tomorrow we'll attach the base. All right, so I rechecked my bottom piece. Once you paint this, if you get a little paint down in your grooves, you may create a little bit of problem here. So I basically re 
just sanded a couple edges on here just to make it fit in there nice and perfect. So I've got it ready to drop in. My top is completely dry now, so I'm ready to attach it. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and distress my piece. I'm just going to take some sandpaper uh, or my orbital sander. I'm just going to hit it places to bring the black through it. Again, this is optional. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. Uh, entirely up to you. All right, so that's what I ended up with. Again, this took like five minutes. Distress it as little or as much as you want to. I just got it evenly looked. Like I said, I don't want to look like it's beat to death, but I don't want it to look like it's brand new either. So I've got it flipped over. I drilled my holes in for my um, bottom shelf. Now, to make it easier on yourself, if you put your top on next, it'll be a whole lot easier to get to these screws. If not, you're going to have to reach through these holes and try to angle your drill and stuff to get in there. So I'm going to patch my top first, drop my bottom shelf in, then attach my bottom shelf. So after I got it evened out here, I took a couple clamps just to hold it in place while I screw it down. That way it doesn't move on me. All right, so you see my top is on now. I'm going to take my bottom, slide it in. And again, now my bottom fits in there nice and snug. So if your bottom fits nice and tight like that, you don't have to screw that from the bottom. If you want to attach it from the bottom, simply flip it over, shoot your screws up to the bottom, and attach it. So another option for the bottom is to plank it and not um, screw this one like this one screwed together. It's a nice solid piece of wood, but if you want to plank it and you end up with more of a plank look, you can go with this. Um, I think I like this look better. This is the way I did my first one that I did. So I've got a matching set now if I do it this way. All I need to do is put my poly on there and let it dry. Same thing here. You can attach these from the bottom if you want. You don't have to. They're not going to fall over unless your table flips over. So depending on if you're moving your table or flipping your table over. Those sit in there perfectly, don't need to do anything. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, this is the first time I've ever really videotaped building anything that I assembled like this. So uh, hopefully I get better as I go. Uh, I apologize for any of the repeated words over and over and over. I'm going to try to edit down the best I possibly can. Please click on like, subscribe, drop me a comment.